starting to record. Perfect. Thank you. I, yep. Thank you very much, Jim. OK, well, good evening, everyone. Thank you for for joining us this evening and apologies for the few technical glitches we've had before we start. Uh, like to just welcome everybody. The purpose of this uh, presentation this evening is to share information about the Vancouver School District's early Mandarin and Mandarin bilingual programs. So the target audience for this uh, session is parents who are considering enrolling their children in these programs for the upcoming school year. Uh, this session is being recorded and the presentation will be posted on the VSB website. So before we begin, uh, I'd like to acknowledge that we live, work and learn on the traditional, ancestral and unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish and Tsleil-Waututh nations, for which I'm very grateful. The presentation tonight will be probably about 25 or 30 minutes, uh, and then we're going to follow that with a Q&A. So um, we will not be using the chat. If you can put your hand up at the end using the top banner, uh, we will be um, asking you to unmute and ask your questions. So uh, the uh, slide that is shown gives you a brief overview. I would like to um, welcome and thank. We have Jim Monk, who is the principal at Trudeau. We have Dina Kotak Buckley, who is the principal at Northway, joining us this evening, as well as some teachers. So we have Ivy, Melissa, Shelke, and Christy, who are all teach a variety of grades and are here to be able to present to you and answer um, any of your questions. So, uh, and we also have Doug Rock, who is the district principal. Um, in educational planning, and he's going to be able to speak to the, the application process at the end of the slide, uh, at the end of the, this presentation. So uh, with that, I am going to uh, turn it over to the, Nor to the teachers at Norway. Hi, so I'm Ivy. Um, I teach the kindergarten grade one. So this year I've been teaching grade one. Um, so right now we're jumping onto the slide talking about the Mandarin language instructions at Norway. So what um, the structure is at school is we split the subjects into different um, languages. So you can see for the Mandarin language arts, physical education, arts education, ADST, those are taught majority in Mandarin. Um, and we focus a lot on the oral language. So you can see all those subjects are very hands-on, um, a lot of collaborative, um, so the kids can talk to each other. And um, we really focus in the primary years, that oral language. So then they can develop that sense of language before they can do the writing and reading in later years. Um, and I want to emphasize that because all the teachers at Mandarin, um, I mean, at Norway, we are bilingual. So we actually speak Mandarin throughout the day. So it's not just specifically during Mandarin language arts. It could be, you know, instructions like putting your things away, um, lining up, or remember we're going to the library. So we do speak Mandarin throughout the day. Oh, and I saw the slide. Oh, sorry. The K to three, we teach in traditional. Uh, we purposely did that. So then when we are teaching the younger grades how to read and write, they're not getting confused with the pinging system that is in the simplified system. So we made that switch a few years ago and it's been working really well. And so the students learn the traditional um, characters and when they're in the intermediates, they switch into the simplified. But that way they have two systems that they understand and the transition has been pretty successful because um, traditional, the characters generally are a little bit more difficult. So then when they go to the simplified, when they transition to it, it seems to be pretty flawless. And then we talked about the English language arts. So we do um, English language arts, we do math, science, social studies, and health and career in English. And so when we are doing that, you just have to be cognizant and just know that 
we do everything the same as an English stream program, but we condense it in that 50%. So we do quite a bit of instructional time when we do English because we really try to make that holistic learning that when we're doing that English language arts, we are also trying to incorporate that into our math, into our science and social studies. So you might see in the older grades more projects. Um, so then that way we allow that 50% to be quite condensed. And so it's a pretty intensive 50% of the day. I think it is time for me, right? Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Xiao Ki Fan. Uh, I'm the Biling um, Kudo Grade 6 7 bilingual teacher. Uh, now, uh, it is time to talk about our Kudo Management Bilingual program. Uh, the core curriculum for this program is taught in English. And Mandarin is taught only for about one block a day, five block a week. Students will learn classroom conversations and they are encouraged, encouraged to have conversations with the teachers during the whole day. For example, if you are going to ask some daily uh, uh, conversations, can I use a washroom, whatever, I said, always encourage them to stay in Mandarin. I said, if you get any mistakes, so I can make some correction for you. <clears throat> So we all know that interest is the best teacher. So students' interest and motivation are the key point of the success for them in the program. Mm, yeah, the next slide. Yes. So this program will enable students to develop their oral comprehension and fluency in Mandarin and also help them with the ability to read and the red Mandarin. Canadian and the Chinese cultures are also part of the program, so students can have a better understanding of the language and the culture while they learn Mandarin, as well as, as their second language. For example, it's almost the Lunar New Year, so probably we'll have a, a field trip and also have some celebrations activities to celebrate the new, Lunar New Year. Uh, this program will complete all the requirements or all follow all the uh, requirements of the BC curriculums. So we we actually we only have one block. It's, it's a kind of different from Norway. Norway is 50%. For us, it's only one hour a day, approximately one hour a day. So and we start at uh, start at grade four. Yes. All right, uh, as Janice mentioned, my name is Jim Monk and I'm the principal over at Trudeau Elementary and we just wanted to go through some things about the programming. Uh, Mandarin Bilingual is a language acquisition programs, which means that students are not expected to know any Mandarin ahead of time. Students will develop uh, Mandarin speaking skills and reading and writing uh, in the program. Uh, this at uh, Trudeau in particular, because we don't have the 50 50 uh, students will uh, be following very closely the uh, regular English curriculum, as with students in the regular stream. What the program is not, it is not a heritage program. Mandarin bilingual is not a program where Mandarin is your first language, and it's not a program for those who already speak and know the language very well. A heritage program is one where you try to maintain your language and it would be at the same level as the home country being taught. For example, my, my wife, uh, when she immigrated from Spain, uh, she went to Vancouver schools and uh, uh, but twice a week she went to a Spanish school. It was a heritage program, so she was learning Spanish at the same grade level and all the curriculum that was in Spain at the time. But Mandarin Bilingual is not such a program, but it's for students new or fairly new to the language. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, success fast factors, risk taking, positive self esteem, confident, getting along with peers and is also able to be an independent worker, receptive to learning language, 
positive and willing attitude. And that is the key thing is uh, attitude is key to success in a language pr uh, program. Over the years, talking to a number of different language teachers, they constantly say that this is uh, key for positive progression in learning a new language. Again, mentioning my wife, she is a high school uh, language teacher, and so she gets grade eight kids coming in from French. They're coming from all different experiences of French in their the elementary years, and they come in with different levels depending upon what was taught in the elementary schools. But she finds by the winter break, the students that are progressing the best are the ones with the best attitudes, the ones that engage and get involved the most. And so that is very key. Uh, and attempt to communicate in Mandarin is, is very important. Attending school regularly is another key moment. With any choice program in particular, if you're planning to have a four, six, or eight week trip uh, throughout the year, uh, that's not going to work very well in terms of the development uh, in language acquisition. Also being a district program is unlike uh, your neighborhood school where you may live a two block walk away, you will have to drive. It's very important that parents uh, or guardians get the students to school on time and therefore there's the least amount of disruption in the classroom and the student can settle in and get started very positively in the day. Family members are all comfortable and supportive with the choice of Mandarin program and parental support and connection uh, with the school is very key as well. And that's the key for any success in school. And uh, as a parent supporting your child in the Mandarin bilingual program, it can take many forms. Just this past Monday, a parent uh, was sharing with me how they were driving. I live out here in Richmond and they were driving in Richmond and their son was uh, making comments, uh, reading some of the signs of uh, some of the businesses and and the mom engaged him in that and uh, reinforced like, hey, that's great about what you're learning. And so uh, uh, just be very supportive of your children in the program, but also remember that you need to be patient as language learning is a lifelong uh, journey uh, in order to receive mastery. And uh, so they're not going to be learning the language within a couple of years. It's going to take time and, and a process. All right, I think I'm passing this along now to Melissa. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Melissa and I currently teach grade four at Norquay. So uh, what is the Mandarin program, bilingual program? So the goals of the program is to develop language and literacy skills in Mandarin and English and use both to communicate and also to learn about Chinese culture at the same time. Uh, student profile. So the program is intended for students whose first language is English and who wish to have a dual language learning experience. We found that if you have one language to base the Mandarin on, it's easier for them to learn. And the program is intended for children who have oral fluency in English. So if they have a good base in English, it will be easier to add on the Mandarin. Next slide. So how to help your child? Um, the connection between home and school is really, really important. So continue to read with your child, continue to play language and number games at home in your home language, show an interest in their Mandarin learning, have them teach you, um, trust your teacher's professionalism, knowledge and experience, and open communication between home and school is important for the success of all learners. Hi, so I'm Christy. I am currently the grade five Mandarin bilingual teacher at Trudeau Elementary. Since at Trudeau, uh, grade four is our first entry year, so I would say I'm the year two Mandarin teacher. So we have some common questions that were asked by parents in the past, so I would like to go over them and some answers to those questions. But I guess for later on, if we have more questions, then we will get to that too. So first question is, what if my child already speaks two languages at home? So um, many students in Vancouver actually speak more than two languages at home. It does not hinder them from learning another language. Um, even more so, if they have interest and motivation, they can still succeed in learning Mandarin in this program. Um, second question, what if my child has difficulty in their mother tongue? So for example, um, for our English language learners, I would say based on experience, ELL level three and above, they're still pretty 
um, good at succeeding in Mandarin learning in this program. However, for ELL one and two level students, they're still encouraged to learn, but at the same time, we would strongly advise to have additional English language support for them at home. Um, next one. What if my child can already read and write above the K level? So I'm assuming parents are asking if your child can already read and write in Mandarin. So there are some situations here. So our program focuses on developing communicative um, competence. So meaning developing their listening and speaking skills mostly. So if they're reading and writing in Mandarin, they can either develop their speaking confidence in the program. However, if they're pretty fluent on top of reading and writing in Mandarin, then the pro then our program might be too easy for them. Um, another thing is, for example, if the child is fluent in reading and writing Mandarin in Simplify, uh, the program at Trudeau, we teach traditional Mandarin. So in that sense, they can strengthen their Mandarin language. Um, sorry, they can strengthen their traditional Chinese skill. And then another situation is if the children is reading and writing pretty well in Mandarin, however, just lacking the speaking confidence. Yeah, so the program can still develop that skill. I think I went over it. I think that's pretty much it for my three questions. And then the last question about assessment process. Um, I'm passing on to a teacher at Norquay for that, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, so we do have an assessment process. Um, so once your child is ap applied to the choice program, usually it's lottery for the K and the one entry. And so once the lottery um, has finished, you will be notified by your list. And if you will be, um, be able to come to the program or you're on the wait list. And we will assess all students who are able to come to the program and also the first few who are on the wait list in case some people drop out. So there is that English competency um, assessment process. Now, when it comes to the in, the other grades, so two, three, four, five, six in the Mandarin early my early Mandarin bilingual program, there is a, also a Mandarin assessment that is going to be in place to just make sure that the student that comes to the school will be able to join into the program without too much difficulty in the Mandarin part. And all the assessment has been created by the teachers who are teaching that grade. So that way um, they know exactly which level they should be at when they come into that grade. Um, just to add on to the Trudeau situation, so Trudeau, our entry year is grade four. For, en for entering in grade four, there's no assessment, but then if your child is interested in entering grade five, six, seven, there will be a Mandarin assessment process just so that we, we know the child can catch up on the current level of the students. And then again, the assessments are also done by the teachers that are teaching in the program. Hello, everyone. Hope you're having a great evening and great to see such a wonderful turnout for uh, our information session this evening. Um, so uh, as Janice mentioned at the beginning, uh, I'm Doug Rock. I'm uh, one of our district principals uh, here at the school district. And one of my roles is to work to support schools and families with the application and registration process for our various uh, school programs, including our choice programs, such as um, our Mandarin bilingual, and earlier Man early Mandarin bilingual program. So I'm going to share a little bit of information about the application procedures. Um, and as, as we've said, if you have any questions, we can certainly take those at the end. Um, so specific to kindergarten, um, if you are uh, applying for kindergarten for next year for your child and you're interested in um, applying for a choice program, you do need to apply to your English catchment school. Uh, and so that's the catchment school in your general area. Uh, if you're not sure of your catchment school, when you go to our uh, VSP registration uh, page, there's lots of information on there to help guide you. Um, there's something called the school locator tool. Uh, it's really easy to use and you simply you, you click on a link and you're able to input your address and it will show you the system will show you a map uh, and indicate what your English catchment school is. So basically every child that is um, going to be attending any Vancouver school, whether your intention is for a choice program or for our 
um, English community programs, you will apply through that link, vsbapplynow.vsb.bc.ca. Um, and so through that process, uh, the catchment school, so again, that's the catchment school in the general area in which you live that, that uh, corresponds with your address, they will contact you directly to verify documents in person. Um, I'm going to skip to the uh, fourth bullet for a moment. So it says for document verification. So they're going to ask you to come in person uh, and bring a number of different documents. Um, and these documents are important, important for us uh, to be able to register your child. So that will include your child's birth certificate, child's immunization records, proof of residency. So they might ask you for property tax notice, rental agreement, hydro bill. There's also some forms of um, picture identification that they're going to ask for. So that information will be communicated to you by the catchment school uh, and you will register. And it's really important that you do do register for this process. So you know to be able to register um, for a choice program, such as the Mandarin programs um, for kindergarten, you are going to need to um, you're going to need to have what we call a PEN number, P-E-N, stands for Provincial Education Number, and that's generated through this process. So if you don't have that number, meaning if you haven't gone through this process, you're not going to be able to, uh, the system won't allow you to register for, for a choice program. So this is a process. I'm going to skip back up to the third bullet. Um, and uh, for our um, English catchment, regular um, English catchment uh, kindergarten process, you can register anytime now uh, until the end of January. And it's not a first come first serve basis. So you just need to make sure that you do register before the end of January to be able to then register in for any of our choice programs to submit an application. We'll move to the next slide. So uh, this is specific to um, online choice applications for kindergarten. Now there's the website right there. And again, our registration website uh, here at VSB, we have lots of information to help guide you through. Um, online application opened already January 9th and it closes February 3rd at 4 p.m. Now that closing date is very important. Um, the system will close down after that time and, and will not accept any new applications. And there is the application um, website, paychoice.vsb.bc.ca. And again, when you go to our registration page on our VSB website, uh, there's lots of clear information to help guide you through. So when you are on that Kchoice um, website, um, it's easy to use. It's a number of pages that you scroll through and there's various, you know, there's information fields and, and it's sort of designed in a way that asks you questions. Uh, so for example, it will ask you what are, what is your choice one, choice two, and choice three? Um, school for any of our choice programs. Now you can indicate or you can apply for up to three choice programs. You don't have to apply for three. You can apply for one or two or three, but three is the maximum. Um, and on that site, you can apply for a variety of choice programs if that's if you're interested in um, looking at different options for your child. So for example, you can apply for kindergarten, um, early Mandarin and bilingual at Norway. You could also apply for, um, uh, let's say, French immersion at school A and French immersion at school B. Or you could apply for Mandarin bilingual at Norway and perhaps you apply for um, um, school B, um, English, or I should say French immersion in school B and Montessori, for example. So that's okay. That's within the three choices, but keeping in mind that it's maximum of three, and those three include the variety of different schools that we have choice programs and the variety of choice programs. Um, if you've been a parent in our district for some time, if you have some older kids, you might be familiar with what we used to refer to as priority zones um, for choice programs. Uh, we do not have priority zones at this time, um, so parents may choose to apply to any district choice program. And what that means is a little bit different than how it works for your English catchment school. So I already mentioned you you find out what your catchment school is and you apply to a school based on your physical location within the, within uh, a boundary um, on a map, for example, you know, with, within the city of Vancouver. Um, if you think of a, that concept of catchment for our choice programs, the catchment is the entire city of Vancouver. And what that means is that anyone anywhere who lives in Vancouver um, can apply for our choice programs and be considered equally. So when you uh, put in your application, if there was, for example, a draw, which is done electronically and draws are done, if we have more applicants for a particular program, than we have space um, that will weigh or it will draw um, all of our families equally, regardless of where you live in the city. So whether you live closer to the school that you're applying for or further away, there's no priority based on your actual address, provided that you live in the city of Vancouver. 
Um, if we have more applicants and spaces, there is a draw that will be held, and this will be done in February. Now, um, we do have a, an administrative procedure called sibling priority within our registration. Uh, so if you are a family, if you're applying for any of our choice programs, such as early Mandarin bilingual at Norquay, if you currently have a child, so if the child for whom you're applying currently has a sibling um, that is enrolled at the school, at the same school you're applying for. So when you're physically applying, so like today, for example, or uh, during the school year, so up to February 3rd, right now um, your child has a sibling um, who is enrolled at the school you're applying for, and that sibling will also be enrolled at the same school on the same choice program the following year, um, you're eligible for sibling priority. And there is a field when you um, enter your application to uh, declare if you have it, if, if that uh, situation does apply to you. So if you do have a sibling, if your child you're applying for does have a sibling currently at the school who will be attending the following year, um, if that's the case, you will need to um, enter the student's name and their, again, that PEN number, that's the provincial education number. Um, if you don't know that, not a problem, you're, you're the, the, you're, um, the school can can help you with that, uh, and then we verify or cross reference that you know that 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 information that you do have a that there is a sibling. Um, so the priority for choice programs is, is siblings, as I mentioned, and then for any additional spaces, if there are more applicants and there are space, there is a draw that's held in February. It is an electronic draw, um, and it does weigh. So there's a weighting, so it weighs your choices. So for example, those who apply for choice one, then those who apply for choice two, and those who apply for uh, choice three, if you do it, uh, choose to, um, if you choose to make three choices, uh, all applicants will be contacted by email mid February. We do say mid February as an estimate because there's, um, um, you know, it, it can be a little bit flexible the time that we need to process the information through our systems. So it's really important that you are uh, attentive to your email. So whatever email you've entered in your application process, just make sure, please, that you are checking your email. Um, on a daily basis because you you will be receiving communication regarding your um, regarding your application. I uh, always like to, to just ask families too, uh, because there are such a variety of different email servers and addresses that, that families use. We sure hope this doesn't happen, but on the off chance that an email did end up in your junk or your spam folder, um, I strongly recommend that you check not just your main inbox, but check those other folders as well, just in case. So all applicants will be contacted by email uh, mid-February, um, and you'll either and you will receive an email that is either an offer for for early Mandarin bilingual or whatever choice program you've applied for, or uh, will indicate that your child has been waitlisted. Now this is really important. This last bullet here: if you are offered a space in any of our choice programs, you do have 48 hours to respond to the email. So you can take a little bit of time if you need it to think about it. Uh, but you have only 48 hours. So in that email, it will give you a time um, by which you need to contact the school. And if you don't, uh, unfortunately, we you know, we do need to move on to our wait list because we do want to uh, you know move through that process. So it's again very important to be checking your email within that time. If you do receive an offer for any of our programs and um, you wish to decline the offer, the email will will ask you to please write respond with that, that you're declining it. And that really helps us out as well to and helps other families so we can move through um, our um, wait list a little bit quicker. Um, OK, on this slide, your application procedure. So if you are offered a space again, this is this is bold, highlighted in blue. It's really important. You do need to accept by 3 p.m. on the date that's specified in the email or the space will be forfeited and offered to the next child on the wait list. And it's really important that we do move, you know, within that time frame through our wait lists um, in fairness to all of our families and uh, to make things just a little bit more efficient and effective. Um, there is an option for entering district draw for space at another school. So in other words, remaining on the local school wait list. And uh, important to know, kindergarten wait lists do dissolve at the end of June 2024. So if your kindergarten child is waitlisted, that wait list will, will be in effect um, until the end of the uh, school year of which your child starts kindergarten. Okay. And we'll do the next slide. Thank you. Now, the grade one to seven application procedure is a little bit different. Um, similar to kindergarten, there are a limited number of spaces may be available, usually less because we have, you know, kids are already uh, in cohorts in, in our choice programs. Um, the main difference, though, is the format of application. 
Um, so we it is not an online application process for grades one to seven. It's a paper form uh, and you apply directly to your school of choice uh, now until the between now and the end of January. So January 31st, 2023. Um, if you are applying for any of our choice programs, whether it's really Mandarin bilingual or you know French immersion, et cetera, um, it's really important that you note that date. Um, that's our first priority group. So uh, you will submit a paper application. It's available on our website. Again, our, our registration website has lots of information and there's uh, it's um, it's linked on there in, in several places for you. Um, so you basically would print off that application form. You'd complete it and you deliver it to um, the particular school you'd like to apply to. I always recommend that you call the school first just regarding the best way to submit the form and the best timing for them. Um, but it's important to get that in before January 31st. So you're in what's what we would call uh, priority group number one. So again, um, uh, within that, um, within the applications received by the end of January, January 31st, if there are more applications than there are spaces in any choice program, for that grade, uh, there will be a draw based on those applications received up until January 31st. Um, and and then, you know, there will be offers and wait lists. Now, any can you still submit an application, let's say February 5th or in, in March or April or May? Absolutely, you can. But the difference is after January 31st, that first grouping, there's a draw and there's a wait list. Then applications are waitlisted in the order received after um, all of those applications that have been received prior to January 31st. Uh, if there are more applicants and spaces, again, we do have sibling priority for grades one to seven in choice programs as well. Uh, we'll have a draw and similar to kindergarten uh, process, all applicants will be contacted by email in the spring. Um, and we do say spring. It does. There's you know various factors regarded, uh, regarding staffing, for example. That means just the number of teachers that each school has. And because uh, usually grade one to seven, these are often existing cohorts of kids. Um, kids move um, or there might be some shift in the enrollment and that can happen really any time through the spring. So it's a little bit different than the kindergarten. That said, kindergarten, uh, their enrollment does shift as well, basically from now through to the beginning of the school year. So you will get an email similar to the kindergarten process I described. You'll be offered a space in the program uh, or you'll be waitlisted and given your place number on the waitlist.